Welcome back. It is Power Rankings time once again. I'm wearing Jets garb for the second time today. Let's go. All right, so we'll start things off at number 32. I also want to say this is the last Power Rankings I'm doing as a video. Next Friday, I intend to do the final Power Rankings as a live stream. I've done that before. I'm doing it again. I think it was 2020 was the last time we did that. But anyways, here we are. Uh, number 32 this week, dropping one spot from last week. And yeah, Anaheim's back in 32nd. Uh, for the Ducks, they've been alternating 31st or 32nd for weeks, and they're back. So they were 32, 31, 32, 31, 32. Um, I, don't, I don't really have a whole lot to add. Obviously, if you're the Ducks, you're hoping this is the worst it's going to get. Well, I said two years ago I thought it was going to be the worst it was going to get. I'll say it again here, but maybe put up an asterisk because it's hard to tell when things are really going to get better. Number 31 this week, moving up one spot, because that's how this has been working, uh, the San Jose Sharks. So the Sharks move up one spot from last week. They have been switching back and forth with the Ducks uh, for well over a month now, and that continues to take place. Uh, not a ton of movement on most of the board, but uh, at least these two keep switching places. Number 30, dropping two spots from last week. Let me go ahead and move my Patrick Waugh picture right over... No, no. Actually, I'll put it down here. Right there. And then I'll make sure I put it back after. Uh, number 30, dropping two spots from last week, Chicago. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks playing out the string. Uh, the good news for them being that Kershev's looked really good. Bedard's looked pretty good. Uh, and I, I think their goaltending has been capable as well. There's enough here that, that I, I think next season we'll see some improvement from Chicago but we're a week away from the, the end of the regular season. Well, less than a week away from the end of the regular season. We're a week away from the start of the playoffs. And that's where I start talking about teams that miss the playoffs as well. So if you're cheering for a team that's in the bottom half of the board, don't worry. There's a video coming soon. Uh, number 29, dropping two spots from last week. The Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, for the Blue Jackets, a bit more of a rough week. Uh, they're still ahead of these three teams. Obviously, they're a team that's not winning very many games. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's I've talked about it before and again over the next couple weeks. We'll be looking at the black at the Blue Jackets and I can get into or the Black Jackets. That might work, too. But, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about how maybe they can fix this and what what the thing what what their their picture looks like going forward. But they dropped down to twenty nine this week. Uh, number twenty eight. And I, I went back and forth a bit on this one. But number twenty eight up two spots from last week. The Seattle Kraken. So for Seattle, they do move up a couple of spots. There you go. Uh, Seattle currently 33, 33, and 13. They're against St. Louis tomorrow. Um, and I, I mentioned this in the preview that I've already recorded. I'll mention it again here. This is where I'm I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to do other video stuff. I'm not going to do that as a review on its own because neither St. Louis nor St. Louis, neither, neither St. Louis nor Seattle are going to the playoffs. So um, for Seattle, uh, it's been a setback this year. They're not as bad as they were the first year, though, so they're not as far out as they were that first year. Uh, number 27, also moving up two spots from last week, the Arizona Coyotes. And, of course, uh, next week will be the last time that an Arizona Coyotes puck ends up on the board. I, I don't know how this is going to work with Utah. I have no idea. Uh, for the Coyotes, of course, it's been a rough week off the ice. Sadly, and, and I'm, I'm, I mean this, sadly, on the ice, the product's been pretty good. And I say sadly because this is where if you're a Coyotes fan, you could have said, wow, they went in and they beat Vancouver. They went in and they beat Edmonton. Tomorrow they're against Calgary. Um, so, you know, there's, there's hope for next year, but next year they're not in Arizona. So uh, for the Coyotes, I'm, I'm very impressed with how the players have handled this. They've been professionals, really true professionals. I am sure they're very frustrated with this whole thing, but uh, yeah, uh, the Coyotes, uh, 27th this week. The other thing to keep in mind too, and again, I'll talk about this over the next couple of weeks, there are a lot of players on expiring contracts in Arizona, a lot. Um, the expectation was not that they'd be moving, but just that they'd be able to upgrade their defense next season. We'll see how it all goes. Uh, number 26, same spot as last week. The Calgary Flames. Uh, the Flames moved around a bit this week, but by the time you reach Saturday, they're back in the same spot. Uh, so for the Flames, they're playing out the string again. Tomorrow, they're at home against Arizona. Uh, their record, 36-38-5. I mean, if you're a Flames fan, you know that 
they sold off all year, so the odds of them making the playoffs were long. Uh, I still think there's going to be a bounce back from them next season. I just don't know if it's going to be a bounce back enough to get them in the playoffs or not, but we shall see. Uh, number 25, rounding out the bottom row this week. Same spot as last week, the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, the Canadiens are competitive. They're getting some good hockey out of guys like Slavkovsky, uh, Suzuki, Matheson is over 60 points. Caulfield started scoring goals. Their goaltending's been good. They're just not getting the results, which is perfectly fine if you're a Montreal fan uh, because this is a team that, yeah, you could probably use a couple more prospects. Why not? Uh, they just signed Lane Hudson yesterday. Why not just, you know, add another top-notch prospect out of a draft that's not considered as deep as last year's, but I mean, if you're drafting in the top 10, you should still get a pretty good National Hockey League player. Uh, number 24, same spot as last week. I know, not much movement. But uh, the Ottawa Senators. So, again, teams moved around in this area of the board, but by the time you get to Saturday, everybody's back where they were before. Uh, for the Ottawa Senators, it's been an up-and-down experience the second half of the season. Uh, they're another one to keep, keep a real eye on this summer because I, I think this has to be the summer where they really and truly improve. And next year has to be the year they get back into a playoff spot, or at the very least, get back to... You know, being within shouting distance with the last couple weeks left in the season, right? All right, number 23, also in the same spot as last week. So somebody's probably going to come in here and go, hey, this is the same as last week's rankings, is Philadelphia. So what's interesting with Philadelphia is early in the week, Philadelphia was 29th. Absolutely. They were, they were done. And then the last two wins they got, pulled them all the way right back up to where they were last Saturday. So Philadelphia right now, they're alive in the playoff hunt. I didn't think they would be, uh, but here they are. And, and so we'll see. Uh, the odds are still not great for Philadelphia, but they got the win tonight. Pittsburgh lost. Uh, there's, there's still that window there. I would love to see the Flyers make the playoffs. I've said it before. I'm saying it here. Um, I, I would love to see them get in. I think that would be great for their fans and uh, for John Tortorella. Who doesn't want to see Tortorella in the playoffs? You don't have to put your hand up. I can't see it. Uh, number 22, dropping two spots from last week, the Minnesota Wild. So the Wild, uh, tonight they got a blowout victory over San Jose, but that's after they got blown out by the Vegas Golden Knights. So... Uh, for Minnesota, it's it's kind of been, they backed out of the playoff chase, and you can tell that the intensity drops for these teams when they're out of the chase, and while players are still getting goals and the points are still there, there's something missing from their game, and it just seemed like that was the case with Minnesota against Vegas. So they dropped down to 22 this week. I can't see them being in the bottom row by the time we reach next Friday. There aren't that many games between now and next Friday, so I, I just can't see it. Uh, number 21, same spot as last week. They they don't move. They just, they don't move, and that's New Jersey. Uh, the New Jersey Devils, same spot as last week for them. Uh, they, they do have 38 victories, yep. Uh, they also have 38 regulation losses, and this is a team that uh, has shown that they can compete, they can score. Uh, next season, I think they bounce back and get back into the playoffs. They have to. This is a, they're too talented a team to miss the playoffs two years in a row. Um, I still think that the injury to Dougie Hamilton combined with the goaltending issues they had for most of the season, I, I think that sunk their playoff hopes. I don't think they ever replaced Dougie Hamilton because you can't. You just can't replace Dougie Hamilton. Uh, number 20, moving up two spots from last week, the Buffalo Sabres. Yep, the Sabres move up to 20th. Uh, the Sabres have had a decent run at the end of the season. Today, for instance, they, they take uh, the Florida Panthers to overtime. So, I, I mean, there's a good team there with Buffalo. Tage Thompson seems to be having a really strong finish. Same with Alex Tuck. If those guys can start next season how they're finishing this season, that'd be great. Uh, but that's the same problem they had this year compared to last year. So, for Buffalo, it's a matter of sustained success, and we'll see if they can get there next season. Uh, number 19, dropping one spot from last week. I'll use this one. The St. Louis Blues. So the Blues were mathematically eliminated from the playoff chase. Uh, sadly, uh, again, tomorrow they're at home against Seattle. That's a game they should win. 
Uh, they're going to end up in all likelihood with more points than other teams that made the playoffs in the East. It happens. It just happens. Um, but it, it does indicate, to me anyways, it indicates that St. Louis is not that far off. Uh, they're not that far off from being a playoff team. And really, their, their sin, if anything, was losing in regulation. If they'd lost more in extra time, added some extra points, eh, it, it'd be interesting to see how things would be in the West. But uh, for St. Louis, it's it's been a learning experience for them this season. Number 18, also dropping one spot from last week. So not a huge drop, but one spot drop for Washington. This is where we're getting into the teams that are all stuck in that fight for that final playoff spot. Uh, the Washington Capitals dropped the one spot from last week. Uh, they did get the win tonight over Tampa Bay. Uh, they're still in the mix. They may very well end up in the top 16 next week because the teams that make the playoffs are the top 16 for that final power ranking. just has to be that way. Uh, but for the Caps, if they do end up getting in, I don't think they're going to be an easy out. I don't think there is one. Uh, Ray Ferraro said that today uh, on the, the one broadcast he was on, and I agree with him. I don't look at any of the first-round matchups that are potentially there and say, oh, well, clearly this team's going to be way better than that one. Number 17, also dropping one spot from last week, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yep, the Pens drop one spot, and look at that. The Penguins and the Capitals are right next to each other. So they were separated, and now they're together again. Uh, for the Penguins, that loss tonight, that hurts. The loss against Boston hurts. Uh, their chances to make the playoffs dropped off substantially. But, of course, if they win their next game and if everybody else they're fighting with loses, then their odds go right through the roof again. So we'll see how it turns out. But for the Penguins, that was a tough one. You could see Crosby was kind of emotional towards the end of that game. Uh, I, I think he felt that that was one they needed. And so, yeah, for Pittsburgh, uh, a tough, tough loss. They just dropped the one spot this week. Because moving up three spots from last week, the Detroit Red Wings. Yep, we're into the top half. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings back in the top half of the board. How long has it been since they were in the top half? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since they were in the top half of the board. Uh, Detroit, not quite as done as they may have looked a few weeks ago. And I think it would be great if Detroit made the playoffs. Uh, that being said, they're, of course, in a fight with Philadelphia, with Washington, and with Pittsburgh. And I, I think it's great that we have four teams fighting for that same spot. Uh, keeping in mind that the Islanders are not clear yet when it comes to the playoff line, but they're close. They're close to being being clear. Uh, so we'll see with Detroit whether or not they can ruin the uh, the day of, of three teams in the Metro by being that last uh, second wildcard team in the East. Uh, number 15, dropping three spots from last week. Vegas. The Vegas Golden Knights, uh, Vancouver, they lose in Vancouver, they lose in Edmonton. Uh, for Vegas, uh, it looks like at this point that they're probably going to end up being that number two wild card, which to me does make them a very dangerous number eight seed. Very, very dangerous. And, you know, with the whole Mark Stone thing, we'll see. We'll see if he gets cleared. But even when you add Stone to this lineup, I still don't know that this team is going to go very far in the playoffs. Uh, they've been disjointed. Their goaltending hasn't quite been up to par lately, but we'll see. Uh, crazier things have happened. Number 14, moving up one spot from last week, the New York Islanders. So the Islanders move up one spot. They're up to 14th on the board. Uh, they're, I think, 7-2-1 in their last 10. Patrick Waugh isn't playing pretty darn well. So for the New York Islanders and for their fans, it looks like there's going to be playoff hockey. Maybe they play the Rangers in the first round. I, I would be down for that. I have not seen an Islander-Ranger first round matchup in quite some time. I think that would be fun. I, I do. I think that would be a fun series. Uh, the Islanders won the last two. The Rangers won the first two. So we'll see how things would go in a playoff series. But, yeah, I, I, I would sign off on that. Number 13, same spot as last week. The Los Angeles Kings stay 13th. Uh, the LA Kings, of course, tonight with a win over Anaheim, which... You would expect a win over Anaheim, especially since they're fighting uh, to keep that third spot in the division. There's still a chance they hit 100 points as well, so uh, we'll see if they get to that mark. I think there's 10 teams at 100 points right now. 100 points used to be like elite. You had to be elite to get 100 points. Now, eh, not as much. Um, so, and, and before anybody makes the joke, they're giving them out to even the Canucks this year. But yeah, uh, the LA Kings, I think, are going to be a difficult out in the playoffs. Very, very difficult. I've already started seeing articles about how they're playing playoff hockey. 
Well, yeah. Uh, the one three one has been a staple of the playoffs for a very long time. Uh, teams that play the one three one generally do pretty well in the playoffs. Uh, but zone defense is the is the key too. If you look at the kind of defense that teams play, the zone defense seems to work the best. See, I pay attention. Um, just because I don't talk about it in videos doesn't mean I'm not paying attention. All right, number twelve and dropping two spots from last week. I don't think they're playing badly. They just got passed. It's Nashville. So Nashville gets passed this week. They're they're at twelfth. Uh, I still think Nashville's going to be a tough team to play against in the playoffs because they all will. But uh, yeah, for Nashville. Uh, they get the win over Columbus tonight. It wasn't the prettiest win over Columbus, but they do get the win over Columbus tonight. They do drop a couple of spots because teams pass them. Uh, it's not always an indicator of a team playing badly. It's just other teams I feel are playing better. Uh, number 11, moving up three spots from last week, Vancouver. So Vancouver gets the win over Vegas. Vancouver gets the win over Edmonton tonight in Edmonton. Edmonton I'm lost at home in regulation in some time. Uh, so I'm giving them a bit of a pass on the overtime loss against Arizona. A uh, guy in the uh, who works for the Canucks team store speculated that maybe since they'd lost the last two games I went to, that maybe I was the problem. Um, I see no fault with that. Uh, I had speculated back when the channel was first popular. Uh, the Canucks never won when I went to see them live, so I figured it was probably me. Uh, and then in recent years, they haven't lost when we've gone to see them, so maybe the luck has just switched back. But all kidding aside, the Canucks... Pretty good week overall, and now it looks like they should finish first in their division. So um, now it's on them to show that uh, that, that first in the division, that home ice advantage, is, is going to get them somewhere. Uh, number 10, dropping one spot from last week. Florida. The Florida Panthers drop one spot from last week. I still think Florida is going to be very dangerous come playoff time. I think a week from today, I think we're, we're going to get a very focused Florida team. Uh, Florida had the division lead for a couple hours today, and then Boston took it back. So we'll see come come the playoffs how things work out. But um, wouldn't be entirely surprised if I take Florida to win that first round matchup, uh, depending on whether they're first or second and who they're against. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm picking Florida in that matchup. Uh, number nine, dropping three spots. Might be the team they're playing too, Toronto. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, up and down week for them. They do drop three spots on the power rankings. Again, teams get passed. It happens. Uh, but for Toronto, um, Matthews should hit 70 goals. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Although it's Sheldon Keefe. Would I be surprised if he rests Matthews and Matthews doesn't get 70 goals? No, not really. Uh, so for Toronto, uh, the loss against Detroit tonight is, is something I've noticed lately. It feels like some teams are playing more desperate hockey. I thought Detroit was a little more desperate for the result than Toronto was. And so we'll see how Toronto bounces back in their next game. Number eight, also dropping three spots from last week. Yeah, three, Colorado. Uh, now there are some who may say that the Avs should drop further. And those might be Avs fans, actually. Um, I think for the Avs, yeah, today was rough. Today was a rough one. Uh, but they were also playing against a team that's playing the best hockey they have in months. So for Colorado, they're still in the top row. But if they have uh, another rough patch like they've had lately the rest of the way, then when I do the live stream on Friday, they may very well be out of the top 10. Uh, for Colorado, we'll see. Tomorrow they're in Vegas. If they're going to snap out of this, a game against the Las Vegas Golden Knights might be the best elixir for what's gone wrong. Number seven, moving up one spot from last week. Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the Lightning just moving up the one spot this week. Uh, again, you want a team that might be tough to play in the first round. It's it's Tampa. And not only that, uh, it, it looks like we could get Tampa Bay and Boston in the first round. That hasn't been a good matchup for Boston over the years. So we'll see if this year's different. But Tampa Bay uh, generally has had Boston's number in recent playoff seasons. So... Um, I do have some concern. On the other side of it, though, I mean, 2011, they, they did, Boston did knock out Tampa in 2011, but that was 13 years ago. Uh, number six, uh, also moving up one spot from last week, the Edmonton Oilers. So, yes, they lost tonight. Yes, they lost against Arizona. Uh, I still felt like they stay, they, they move up to sixth. More that Colorado had a rough week than Edmonton had a great week. I still thought Edmonton played better than Arizona. Like, so Vancouver and, and 
Edmonton had a similar experience with the Coyotes, but I thought the Oilers outplayed the Coyotes, just Vimelka steals that, whereas Vancouver, I don't think, outplayed Arizona much past that first period. Outplayed them in the first period, sure. The rest of the way, not so much. So uh, for the Oilers, they do move up the one spot from last week. Uh, if they don't win the division, it's fine. I still think they'll be pretty good come playoff time. It looks like they'll probably be against the Kings. Uh, number five, moving up six spots from last week. And the biggest mover on the board, Winnipeg Jets. Yep, the Jets move up six spots from last week. And so for them, uh, they're they're in pretty good shape going into the playoffs, aren't they? This is the highest the Jets have been on the board in quite some time. Uh, let's see, they were ninth that week. They were, ooh, and then they dropped down to 15th. And then they went up to 11th. Now they're back up to 5th. So first row for Winnipeg. And again, that 7 nothing win over the Avs today, that was just, that was thorough. That was thorough. Yeah, that was something. Uh, number four this week, dropping one spot from last week. Boston Bruins. Yep, Boston drops one spot from last week. Not a huge drop or anything. Uh, I think Boston's playing fine as we get ready for the playoffs. Uh, Zaka had his 20th goal tonight. They do beat Pittsburgh. Not the prettiest win, and they do need to work on their power play. But overall, I think Boston's playing pretty well as the playoffs are right on the horizon now. Uh, number three, moving up one spot from last week, the Dallas Stars. Yep, Dallas is up to number three this week. Uh, they have a very good chance of finishing first in the West. And I don't think they're going to be an easy out either. I have no idea. No idea who's going to end up winning in the first round. Um, I'm leaning towards, because they usually wear the jerseys of the teams that I think are going to win in the first round. I'm leaning towards just full cards on the table and just wear the jerseys of the teams I'm rooting for to win in the first round, just to prove the hockey gods don't like me very much. But uh, for Dallas, uh, this, is, this has been quite the season, and I think they're playing their best hockey right now. They've been playing their best hockey for some time. Uh, they are they are going to be very difficult to play against in the playoffs. This I'm I'm kind of kind of excited about the chances for Dallas right now. To be honest, at least in the West, we'll see what would happen in the final. But if they get to the final, well, that's that's huge. Uh, number two this week, dropping one spot from last week, the New York Rangers. Yep. Um, so I, I did have like an exchange with a Rangers fan that said, you know, there's a little bit of panic in 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 Rangerland because the way they've been playing lately. Um, but they they are still in line for a President's Trophy, and if they don't get it, well, that's fine, because it's a jinx anyways. Uh, but yeah, the Rangers dropped just the one spot this week, so I didn't feel like they were still a first-place team on the board, but they're still second. Second's pretty good. So the New York Rangers dropped just the one spot this week, which means, number one, yep, Carolina. Carolina Hurricanes, number one this week. I don't know if they've been number one on the board this year. I feel like they have been this season. Uh, but Carolina, the question has never been how they'll play in the regular season or whether or not they're a really good regular season team. It's can they get over the hump in the playoffs? Is this a team that once we get into June, we're still going to see them playing hockey and they're going to be playing well and we're going to be scoring a lot of goals? Uh, we'll find out. And just how important Jake Gensel is going to be to this team. And then does Gensel just turn around and return to Pittsburgh this summer? You know, questions I have. But anyways, Carolina this week, they're number one. So that ends the Rangers. I think it's uh, four weeks in a row the Rangers were number one. That's a pretty good run. And being number two, not bad either. So when I average all these power rankings out at the end of the year and I do a, an average power rankings, I wouldn't be surprised if the Rangers are number one. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.